um, what do you call it, a, a new colony on the colony itself without the industrial infrastructure of Earth. When you think about you know, how established our, our cities are and our industrial infrastructure, if you were to land on a new world, you wouldn't have any of that. You'd have to learn how to build it from scratch. And that's basically what some of these early texts represent, is the ability to get that Earth-level technology for yourself. There's also computing, which would let us build a gunboat, a spy agency, and a network, uh, and the missile rover. Well, I think I'll shoot for computing now. Um, again, we're not really planning to play the safe out completely. We're more planning to make a statement about who we are in this environment. We'll go ahead and we'll continue. I don't want to leave him in my asthma. OK, there are those very aggressive wolf beetles. We'll try to take that one out. So at this point in the game, we're at turn 20. Uh, we've got th three marine units that are trapping their way around the planet. We've got two explorers. Uh, we're sort of using them as a combined arms force right now, looking for alien nests to clear out. Because we have a bone to pick with the wildlife. Oh, we've got a quest decision. OK, new ventures have established themselves in our colony. And the people are very interested in um, establishing a new outpost near us. Outposts are kind of like these super tile improvements or little city-states. And by establishing trade routes with them, uh, you can get bonuses. And we've got two different choices. Uh, Palatine is an elite resort and retreat operation that does holistic cognitive emotional renewal. So if we were to establish that, that would uh, potentially give us some energy or some culture bonus. New Babylon develops self-sustaining biospheres for consumer use and create closed energy systems and luxury habitation. So I think I'm going to approve New Babylon, because that sounds useful for me. Now New Babylon will be on the map, and they will provide four culture to anybody who establishes a trade route with them. And it looks like they're right down that mountain pass right there. Uh, these outposts can also be attacked by aliens as well, too, or other factions, which is, uh, which is very, very interesting. So we'll go ahead and... Oh, I didn't see those guys there. I should not have gone that far. Well, that's all right. We'll send our Marines around real quick. Let's get, OK, we were damaged by miasma there. I'm going to go ahead and retreat this guy out. And we'll send in, uh, we'll send in the Marines. We'll have this guy start to heal up. And we'll send, yeah, I can't move on top of my own guy. Way to jam it up, Poindexter. OK, we'll just let everybody heal up for a turn here. He doesn't need it. Needs orders. Yeah, you need orders. OK, we've got an expedition site here. Um, I'll pop back to that on next turn and discuss it in a little bit more detail. OK, so your explorers, not only do they, are they useful for going out and doing reconnaissance in the territory around you, they have the ability to conduct expeditions. Expeditions are investigations into the planet and its past uh, history or interesting artifacts that are on the surface of it. In this case, we've discovered a crashed satellite. And by using our explorer's expedition module, which will take us 10 turns to investigate, um, when it's done, we'll get a bonus of some kind. It's a little bit like archaeology in Civ V. Um, but the breadth of rewards is pretty impressive. And there's all kinds of things you can research on the planet ranging from uh, giant alien skeletons to uh, these you know, crash satellites to even abandoned settlements, you know, remnants of seeding operations that went badly uh, before you landed on the planet itself. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tell this explorer to start following on behind us. A bit next turn. And we'll just have the explorer come up behind. It's interesting is it's gotten very quiet. OK, just because I said that, it got too quiet. And now we're ready to go. So we'll go ahead and we will fight this wolf beetle here. There's our ranger, our ranged combat units up online. We'll bring him out. We need to choose production now. I want to choose a combat rover. And uh, we're being asked to make another quest decision now. That old Earth relic we brought with us, 
Do we leave it untouched, which will reduce its uh, maintenance cost in our city, or do we open it up to the public? Uh, in this case, I want to open it up to the public. I've got plenty of energy. Um, that bonus culture from it, it'll give us an extra culture each turn. That'll be pretty useful as well, too. All right, so we're going to go ahead and see who else needs orders. Let's see how exploring these orders. All right, because we didn't move it all out. You know what? You just heal up for a turn. There's a bit of a log jam there, but I've got my strongest unit in front, and this way he can shoot bugs for uh, a fantastic veterancy bonus. And you notice now we're, uh, you know, between those virtues we've chosen and um, shooting these guys up, we're doing pretty well. I don't think I want to end a turn at less than half strength in a miasma tile. That's probably bad. That wolf beetle will attack me. I'm just going to go ahead and let him keep doing his thing. That's fine, wolf beetle. I'll just fortify right here until it's done. Have our explorer stay put. Our rangers are working their way down now. Oh, it retreated. See? See? It was afraid of us. So we'll just bring the whole column down here. A little bit like that scene from Avatar. All these Marines. Okay. And we're going to pick up this turn. Yep. We finished him off. It was close, but uh, feels good, man. Keep, uh, keep bringing our guys down. So I'm sure somebody's asking what difficulty I'm playing on. I'm actually playing on the second easiest difficulty in the game, uh, mostly for demonstration purposes. Um, also because I'm a little bit scared of what happens when you crank up the difficulty on this. Time for a new virtue. Um, when conquering an enemy outpost, automatically found an outpost of your own in its place. That's very useful later on in the game if you have an aggressive uh, opponent near you. You can basically flip his settlements by, by blowing them up early on. Um, instead, I'm going to choose military industrial complex, which gives me 15% production towards military units. One more might virtue, and I get another synergy bonus for that, which is pretty awesome. That. Okay, unit needs orders. You're pretty badly damaged. Go ahead and heal up. We're going to go ahead and we're going to send in the rest of the team to start to follow up on this. This Marine's now healed up. We'll send him back. Come our Rangers. Rangers, you come on down as well. I believe the next alien nest should be situated down this way. Oh, you have discovered a spare station. Three food and one culture to any city that establishes a trade route to them. Fantastic, another potential trading partner. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and keep going. All right, looks like our combat rover's ready to go. Um, I could continue to push um, push my military strength more, but I'm feeling pretty good about it right now. So I think what I'll do is um, I'm going to start building a worker. It's finally about time we started to put a worker into use on this. Combat rover, you can come on out. Okay. Now, we've got another expedition site, potentially. It looks like we're clear on this end. All right, so let's take a second and uh, let's just recap what all we've gone through. If you're just joining us now, uh, thank you very much for joining us on this live stream of Civilization Beyond Earth. Uh, what we're doing today is we're talking a little bit about aliens and how they're not exactly the barbarians from Civ V. Although you do get bonuses from clearing out their, their nests and um, you can gain experience by, by killing them with your units, if you continue to do so, then all of the wildlife on the planet becomes progressively more hostile towards you. And what's going to happen is very quickly you're going to find yourself over your head trying to deal with siege worms before you're ready to as they, uh, as they start taking you out. 
actually right now we in the world somewhere that will be generating raptors uh, raptors are pretty nasty in the sense that they try to go after units that are not frontline combat units they'll hit your trade routes uh, they'll hit your workers, uh, specifically seeking them out over military units, whereas the wolf beetles will tend to favor those. So it's, uh, it's really something that you have to kind of uh, watch and be careful with. We've spent a lot of time in this, uh, in this first, how many turns have we played at this point? Quite a few, 32 turns, um, focusing on getting our combat capabilities up and as robust as possible. We've actually lost a lot of opportunities potentially to expand as well. Those alien nests that we saw at the beginning were relatively close to our city, but let's see what happens now if we take a more peaceful approach, where we focus more on kind of ensuring the survival of our colony and maybe not being quite as aggressive towards the wildlife this time around. So what do you say we restart and we see how we're going from there? So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna reload the game in just a second here. I want to thank you for tuning in with us. Um, really appreciate it. We're really excited about uh, live streaming uh, Beyond Earth for the first time. Um, I hope this is uh, information you guys enjoy, that you like seeing. Uh, we're going to do more of these live streams of Beyond Earth later on. Uh, we'll start to dive into some different systems aside from the aliens. Uh, we'll look in more depth at, at some of the things that we're touching on in a very brief way in this demo. All right, so I've restarted our game. We are right back where we were the first time around. Um, I do know there are some resource pods in that corner of the universe where we went earlier, and I do think I do want to go out there after them shortly, but uh, we're going to take a different approach to it this time. What I'm going to do is we're going to start picking a technology this time, and I'm going to pick the tech I normally lead off with, which is pioneering, simply because not only is it useful to build your colonists from the get-go, the Trade Depot is a really fantastic uh, building. The ability to create trade routes in your cities, to expand out to those stations, uh, make those trade routes especially valuable. So you're going to see some of the same things happen that we saw in the last playthrough. Uh, you're going to see people drop in through the course of the play. I think uh, fielding will show up at the end of this turn. And we will proceed in a much more peaceful way, trying not to antagonize the aliens this time around. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick Old Earth Relic because I want to get my virtues up and running as fast as possible. How may the corporation serve you? So there's Suzanne Fielding again. Hello to you again. It's a good thing she's actually on the opposite corner of the world because ARC is pretty expansive in terms of what they do. So. All right, there's that alien hive. If this goes the way it did the last game, which we have every reason to believe it should, the aliens will come out and attack us. But this time I'll show what happens when you take a, take a more like softer step towards the aliens. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move away from the nest. I'm going to bring my guy back up. He's got an additional move. Just stay over here. There are those sea dragons again out, out to sea. And notice this time the aliens didn't follow up on us. Uh, because we moved away from the nest, because they don't perceive us as a threat anymore, they're not continuing to go after that explorer. That explorer is free to go after that resource pod. Again, we're going to get a solar collector satellite for the city of Citadella. So we will go ahead and do that. And I am not, I repeat, not going to attack the sea dragon this time. All right, solar collector, I'm going to put you in orbit right over the city. And I know there's a resource pod up there. Marine may not be the best unit to do it, to clear it out with, especially if there are hives up there. So I'm going to take my um, illegally gained knowledge uh, and uh, play it a little bit, a little bit more cautious this time. So you saw the uh, the aliens did come off the nest. We'll just actually stay here a little bit. And you'll see they'll roam around, uh, but they won't be moving aggressively towards you. They'll be sort of uh, patrolling across the landscape. See, they're just, uh, they're more worried about what's coming to attack them. And if we just kind of keep an eye on them, they're not going to be a threat towards us. 
And the advantage to this is this is buying us the time that we need in order to build up our colony into something stronger. So when those outposts start to appear, uh, we, can, we can do something about that. Old Earth Relic's going to be ready in one turn. Uh, city's going to population two. Probably queue up another explorer after this, followed by a worker. All right, production's ready. Let's get another explorer going. We'll send him off in a different direction. Uh, we'll continue to use our, our marine as an ad hoc explorer. That's still a pretty good spot. I, I still think up in this corner here, from what I remember from, from the last playthrough, that was, a, that was a pretty good spot to go and uh, potentially build our next, our next settlement. Okay, we're ready for a virtue. Let's pick a different, uh, different line this time. Might, obviously, is about increasing the strength of your military units, but uh, one of the ones that's pretty good is knowledge. Knowledge is about increasing the uh, yields for both science and culture, and what's cool is you get into this really positive feedback loop with it. I'm gonna choose Foresight, which gives you plus 10% science while your population is healthy, uh, which sounds pretty good to me. That's, I've already brought some scientists with me, so that's already capitalizing on a strength um, that I have going for me already. Send the explorer over this way. There's that next resource pod. That's fantastic. Send this, this guy down this way. What was in that resource pod? OK, we got 40 energy for exploring that resource pod. That's pretty cool. This time, I think I'll push up a little bit more. I see there's a lot of miasma. There's a lot of, oh, it's just that peninsula. Just a little tiny, a little bit more, and I could have uh, could have searched out that end of the map. Okay, time for a worker. Everybody's saying time to build a worker. I agree. We've got two fruit tiles south of here. Um, clearing out those uh, those forests would also give me uh, some hammers. Excuse me, some production that I could use towards my city itself. We've got a uh, two yield ferraxite right next to our city, but we also have this uh, basalt tile, which is, uh, which is pretty handy to have, too. So um, I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll keep exploring down here. We do need that third resource pod in order to complete our quest called Gifts from Home. We'll go ahead and send our, uh, send our explorer down to help out. The universe is either in progress or in entropy. We choose progress. All right, so we've just completed pioneering. Uh, we're ready to choose a new tech. In this case, let's, uh, let's go over here. Our military advisor is recommending ecology because what it gives us is a satellite called the Miasmic Repulsor, which is capable of clearing out miasma from, uh, from tiles. The Vivarium, which is very useful. It gives you two food, but it also increases the food yield from desert. So if you start on an arid world or a planet that has a lot of desert, that's definitely something you're going to want to, uh, to move on pretty quickly. The ultrasonic fence is an interesting building. Um, what that does is that keeps aliens from um, coming within two tiles of the city. Uh, if you have a problem with siege worms, that's usually a tech that you come back and research pretty quickly. I like this ecology because the leaf techs underneath it are geophysics, which allow you to uh, uncover geothermal resources on the map and then build a geothermal well. And I also like alien ecology because it allows you to clear miasma and it protects your worker units from taking damage in miasma, which is pretty handy as well too. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start on ecology. We'll keep going there. There's that wolf beetle from earlier. Now our marine is next to him. Wolf beetles are going to perceive uh, marines and explorers as different levels of threat. Let's see if he attacks our marine. Oh, unit needs orders. You come this way. And next turn. Notice that that wolf beetle didn't automatically attack our marine. Um, it kind of retreated. And the reason is we haven't antagonized the aliens this time. We haven't gotten into a fight that we could have survived, but you know, wouldn't have done us any favors. So they're definitely not barbarians. It's hard to think of a barbarian unit in Civ that would have backed off from an opportunity like that. Okay, the knowledge tree has some additional ones. Uh, we're ready to choose a new virtue, social mores. 
uh, increases the culture yield uh, in a city based on population, you get a quarter of a culture for every person. Um, or we could earn 50 signs from finishing expeditions, which is a pretty cool tech uh, that does consume, you know, that those uh, expedition modules on your explorers do get consumed. So it's like not only does each explorer give you the yield from the expedition, but you get 50 science on top of it too. That's pretty good because right now both of our explorers have their expedition modules intact. So when we find a crashed satellite or something or an alien ruin, uh, we're going to be able to go ahead and we're going to be able to make the most of that. I know there's an alien down that side. I don't think I want to go that way. Go ahead and continue this one. And there's that alien. There's that wolf beetle again. I do need to come down a little bit. I'll, I'll risk the miasma. There's that crash satellite that we saw earlier. And we're going to go ahead and continue. You know what? I should have remembered that that was there. I probably should have researched uh, planetary survey for the embarkation bonus and picked that up. That would have been pretty cool. So if you're just joining us, uh, we're playing Civilization Beyond Earth. Uh, we're looking at what happens when you take different approaches to the wildlife and how that can affect the beginning of your game. We're looking a little bit about how you expand out and some of the basic systems in Beyond Earth and how they differ from Civ V. Uh, in future live streams, we'll be going into a lot more detail on these specific systems themselves. Uh, we'll look at some later game stuff. We'll try playing uh, the same save through over multiple turns. We'll look at the development of our culture over time. It's pretty cool to watch the sea dragons go by when you're not provoking them. That always feels pretty good. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and continue here. All right. So we've, uh, we've discovered most of the limits of our, of our little island start here. It's an odd kind of place to begin the game. A very narrow, thin island shape. Uh, we do have a land peninsula off in this direction, but I'm not sure how far that goes. Um, a surveillance satellite would be really, really handy at this point. Um, so we might be hemmed in a little bit in the future. So I think we're going to have to research kind of a sea technology or a sea-based technology sooner rather than later. We'll start bringing this explorer back. Maybe we'll come across a, uh, a new site serendipitously. Uh, those, those wolf beetles again. I'm actually going to back my soldier up a little bit and we'll start this expedition on that site. We'll go ahead and we'll continue down this way. What's going on back at Citadella? We should be just pretty close. Yeah, one turn away from, from our worker unit. 